in another lecture. So here's an example, a couple examples of what are irrational numbers. One last thing I want to talk about irrational numbers is the symbol for it. It's dead. Um, most textbooks don't make an effort to mention or list a symbol for the irrational number. Other books don't use the J. They just say, well, it's just everything that's not a rational number. The opposite is of a rational number. And that's, that's fine to do that. And I actually mentioned that in my notes. That you have different symbols, a Q with a little bar over a little curly tilde over the Q. That's fine, but it can be represented by the letter J. On the calculator. For irrational number, what we need to do is, for example, pi. Well, pi is located right over here. Okay? So to reach that, notice it's not a main key. It's above a key. So anytime you want to reach a key that's in a different color, blue in this case, you have to press this key up here. It's called a second function key. I'm just going to use the word second. So you're going to go second, and then press the caret key right here, caret. And that will be pi. Okay. If you want e, which is right here, just e. If it's e to raised to some power, that's all in volume. We won't go there right now. But I want to represent e first on the calculator. You go second, and then press the division key over here. What about square roots? Ah right here, above the x squared key. That's how you input a square root. Now, on some lower end model calculators, like one line calculators, some of the tiny uh, scientific calculators, you had to type in a number, then the square root key, Other you say square roots, and then a number. So if you're not sure, just read the instruction menu. In this case, we press the square root key first. And again, since it's not a main key, we press the second up here, and then the x squared key. And then the number you're interested in. So, again, we were talking about the square root of 2 earlier. So, the square root of 2 on the calculator, we can go second and then press the x squared key because you want the second function that's above the x squared key, the square root key. And then, of course, you press enter when you want the calculator to display the answer. All right. There are other keys to get other irrational numbers, cube roots fourth roots, any roots you like. Uh, for more details on that, you need to go to my notes. Yep, they're all in there, the piece of people. Real numbers. Well, one final classification of numbers I want to talk to you about in detail. And that is the concept of a real number. Okay. Real numbers are really just a combination of all, all the rational numbers and all the irrational numbers. The math symbol is this double bar R. Okay. In writing, the symbol is traditionally just written something like this. Okay. So if you had to write down on paper, this is what you would do. And this is the most typical common symbol you'll see. Most of the others, and eh, maybe, maybe not. All right. But this one almost for sure is an instructor will slip it in the class. Be aware of that. Uh, and again, a real number is just any number that can be represented on a number line. Well, we, earlier we talked about how to represent on a number line a specific integer or a fraction, a rational number, whole number. How can we represent all the real numbers? Well, that's easy. Just go ahead and shade in the entire number line. Just make it like a thicker line. That's all you got to do. Now that we've covered all the basic types of numbers, there really is one more thing we should worry about. And it's, well, what if something isn't on a number line? Good. It, you know, it's great to have a point, you know, right there on a number line, but what if my point is now, well, there. It, it's not on a number line. Then what? That's a good question. Well, in that case, we have what are called imaginary numbers. And they're represented by a lowercase i. Like this. 
but imaginary numbers are numbers that are not real. But that's built into this. So you have a hard time understanding what an imaginary number is. Don't worry about it too much. You know, I have an entire different lesson that all we deal with are these imaginary numbers. If we combine this imaginary numbers with the real numbers, then that is what we're going to call complex numbers. So the symbol for complex numbers. Again, I, I don't talk about complex numbers in detail in these notes that get in paper another lecture. But I want you to be aware of their existence. Another example of a complex number is very specific square roots. For example, the square root of negative 2. For example, I cannot put that number on a number line. It, it, it's, it's not real. The inside or the radican of a square root must be positive or zero, not be negative. It's negative, you can't do anything with it. Those are part of the imaginary numbers. I mention this and I mention about the eyes because sometimes on exam, a professor will give you a list of numbers and say, which one of these are real? And well, you can be able to identify, oh, if I see a square root of a negative number, that negative is on the inside, I can't count that. Right? Or an eye. If I see like a little lowercase i on the outside, all bets are off. Right? 